Здравейте, името ми е Васлена Стоянова и тази вечер аз ще бъда водещ на Аглекин. И така, за тази вечер сме ви подготвили двама изключително интересни син и баща, които са а, актьори и певци. Първо ще се запознаем с сина. Те са от а, Холивуд. Адам Аленде. Хай, Адам, can you hear me? Да, приятно ми е да се запознаем. Okay, Adam. So tell me a little bit about yourself, please. Well, my name is Adam Allende. I was raised uh, in show business. My dad is an actor and a singer, and I have been on TV studios, film studios, and concerts, and with fans. And it's been just a beautiful life of traveling and. Uh, many countries. What about your inspiration, please? Yeah, my, my biggest inspirations musically are, well, I love Bruno Mars. Modern artist Bruno Mars because he is an amazing dancer and a great R&B vocalist. I like uh, Lady Gaga because she's very authentic, uh, very unique, very true to herself, uh, and she's a prolific songwriter. She just writes songs and songs and songs and songs and songs. Very creative. So those are my musical inspirations. Okay, so when you're about to get in the st on the stage, uh, how do you prepare yourself emotionally for uh, before going on stage? Before going on stage, I just I breathe. I do this technique. I'm gonna kind of lower the camera a little bit so you can see. So I sit to the edge of my chair. And then it's three uh, uh, steps. One is stomach, the other one is here, and the other one is chest. So you're gonna go one, hold, and let out very slowly through the nose. Then I get my three fingers and I put it behind my neck and I do this. That relaxes me. And the last thing I do to get on stage is this. I tap on my chest, on my sternum to relax. Because what we want before getting on stage is to be as relaxed as possible. You know, get rid of them. Massage your neck. And then, of course, comes the, the vocal exercises. Normally, I just go like... Just to open up the face. And then more... When, I want, when it's time to get on stage, you just go... <laughs> So it goes. And I'm ready to get on stage. Okay, where do you learn all this? Um, school. You must go to school and train. And read a bunch of books and everything. I mean, hold on, I'm going to put my water down. What you want to do is prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Practice, 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 practice. Every single day. Learn as much as you can. Look, if, if you like Michael Jackson, watch him dance. Look at his videos. 
just study every single move, look at the video over and over and over and over again until you finally create your own style. Because what you want to do is be inspired by other people, but there comes a moment where you take everything that you like from every single artist and you, you, you realize that when you start singing other people's songs, you you're singing it differently you're singing it like you sing it not like other people sing it and that's where you want to get okay adam tell us what does it take to be successful what it takes to be successful in show business is uh, persistence um, there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of difficult times, there's a lot of ups and downs, economical ups and downs. Uh, you'll be making a lot of money one, one month or one year, and the next year possibly you won't. You want to surround yourself with the right team of people. You want to have good songwriters. Uh, and be true to yourself. The, the, the industry is going to push you into different directions for you to be the way they want you to be. But your success to me is finally uh, be true to yourself and being successful, doing what you want to, what you want to do, but, and being yourself. That to me is success. Thank you. So, uh, you told us about your favorite singers, tell us about your favorite actors. Yes, 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 yes. My favorite actors are, well, I like Al Pacino. Al Pacino is amazing because he can uh, do theater and he can do film. And one of the things about theater is that you have to be able to project your voice it's a lot like singing you project your voice to the final row it has to be loud and you use your body a lot more that's theater you have to use your expressions because people are very very far away and you want to be able to do that or that or like i don't know or it's like uh, what's going on or just like or just like think but when you're doing when he does film and you get like the close up, like you get very, very, very close. Like one move of the eyebrow or one blink of the eye on the movie screen is very, very huge. So what you want to do is be able to kind of control and contain that energy. And when you're on a film set, they have like a big, big long stick, they put it over. Sometimes that's called the boom mic, or they'll have one here hidden. But what you are doing is creating some sort of tension. If it's like a dike roll, you're you're learning how to not get a and lose all the energy. You want to hold it down and you want there to be an inner conflict. When you're going somewhere, I learned from Al Pacino that when you're going somewhere in your role, you have to think, how do I want my character to feel? How do I want the other person to feel? And you're thinking of that. You're thinking of the desires, of the motivations. What do I want in this scene? Because that's decisions. Human beings make decisions on what they want and what they don't want on pleasure and pain we go to what we feel pleasure and we go away from what creates pain and that's what i learned from al pacino which is why he's my favorite actor thank you very much i want to ask you something where do you see yourself in 10 years Ooh, I'm going to have to uh, drink a little bit of water to answer that question. Okay. 
in 10 years, I see myself just uh, still working, um, creating a reputation and creating a prestige wherever I go. Not only being an actor, but being a businessman, an entrepreneur, a producer, a um, ambassador of my country to share love and share happiness and share unity uh, with other countries and show that we are all one family and you know I want to keep traveling the world maybe in 10 years um, hopefully I'll be married and I'll have kids and I'll be uh, supporting them and whatever they want to study uh, whether if it's business, I'll help study business, or if it's psychology, I'll support them in psychology. Um, because, I mean, as an actor and as a singer, um, it's important to understand. I think the thing that you would do is um, learn as much as you can of all careers, of all, all books, of all topics learn everything and learn as much as you can uh, so that you could really, you know, knowledge is power. So that's where I see myself. Happy. That's fantastic. So uh, we already have uh, questions from the audience. Do you want to hear them? Okay, Aglea, uh, I think that um, drums, I'm a drummer, the first instrument that I played was the drums. I think drums is very, very important to know because uh, it's a rhythm instrument. And once you have the rhythm, you could play all the other instruments because you have the timing. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So when you're playing the drums, I want you to play to other music or to put the click track, the click, 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 click. And instead of listening to what you're playing, Listen to what you're hearing. So you're playing click. But you're hearing click, 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 not you, outside. So that's for drums. And the dancing is amazing because dancing is also coordination. The fact that you play the drums with, with both of your legs and both of your arms is going to be great for dancing. And Latino, I mean, Latin music is just, uh, it's very nice rhythms, very fun, very fun, very cool. So yeah, learn, learn how to play uh, what you want to play. Learn everything, but be a, if you like Latino, s practice it and be the best. Always strive. Don't compete with other people. Um, be, they say, don't the master does not compete with other people or compare therefore the world respects him okay so we have one more question what's your dog's name and do you have other pets <laughs> my dog's name is nacho and he is a little small tiny chihuahua he's like this big uh he is amazing he's funny he he uh, he loves to be on my lap and i put the blanket over and he's always like just like asleep like on my lap and then he loves to walk he loves to go outside and take his little strolls and walk with me outside and yeah, it's, it's really it's really nice to have an animal, uh, a pet, because it brings you calmness 
psychologically it brings you peace to yourself so animals are nice treat them with love and um, dogs are just unconditional they love you no matter what so treat them nicely they're very special very loyal very loyal but careful because they could be very um, if you don't train them uh, at a young age they could get big and they could get aggressive so it's important to train your dog so the, train your dog train it that's the advice that I can give okay so our audience wants to know how your days are going in the pandemic and how do you feel I feel good I feel uh, I'm I'm going to college and I'm studying psychology so I've been very busy I've been studying a lot I've been reading I've been playing guitar, I've been with my family, with my dog. Luckily, I live in a neighborhood that doesn't have that many people, so I can walk without a mask, no people. Just get the sunlight, go to the pool, swim a little bit, um, go to the beach, because I live in a closed community. So, but very careful, very careful. If I ever go in public, I'm, I'm, I have the mask, I have the gloves, I have the shield. Um, there's this new mask that, that I have that it, there's like, it's like, there's like a little machine right here and there's a tube that comes out and you turn on the machine and it sends fresh air ionized air into your um, into your mouth into your face so it helps me because like when you have the mask on for such a long time you want to take it off but that's not good but if you buy this mask that shoots the fresh air into your face you can keep it on and you could feel fresh and you can breathe so that has saved me um, and made me feel really good but I love being at home home is perfect for me I could be home all day and be happy because I am a cancer I don't know if you believe in astrology but astrology is very interesting it teaches you many things about yourself that uh, you will understand about your personality and character uh, so I like being at home I'm a cancer Okay, so that's an interesting question. Uh, they want to know how exactly do you handle rejection professionally? Uh, yeah. Um, personally, I try not to think about it. I try to do it, do the casting, um, and let it go. Once you did it, it's gone. You don't go back and you go on to the next. I always say, if I don't get this, oh, thank you. Not yet, not anything. It's like one, one more no on the way to an inevitable yes. So it's about persistence. It's about, Okay, like you don't know when that yes is going to be so you work even harder and harder and harder and harder because you know that at, there's a certain moment where bam you're going to make it you don't know when but it's going to happen so just re don't about rejection just think about it's like sales you just go 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 don't stop until finally bam you make it and there's going to be more there's going to be no's, but you still go, 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 and bam, you make it. So that's what it's like. Just persistence and strength and power. And I love myself. I'm good enough. I am, I am the best I can be. I am amazing. You have to empower yourself. You, you have to motivate yourself. Okay, so... How do you balance studying with your singing, acting, and everything else you do? 
Um, you do everything. You you organize yourself. You do things in the day. There's a time for singing. There's a time for studying. Um, I look at the actor's studio. Um, you know, you watch little video clips. Sometimes I don't have time to watch a whole entire movie because I'm studying. So I'll watch like the best scenes of this actor on YouTube and it'll give me like a condensed version or I'll be like, you know, like there's something called masterclass. So you could click on like Helen Mirren, for example, and she'll give you a class on acting. So like little by little, you take little sessions. It could be like 30 minutes or 15 minutes uh, a day for each thing. Right? And then you go get the guitar and then you sing a few songs. You practice, you get your your vocal cords ready and you, you stay in shape and you stay flexible. And then studying. I mean, studying is an everyday thing. You're always reading. Like I'm always reading books. As you can see, like, these are all my books. So always just study, study, study. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Work, 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 work. But enjoy, 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 enjoy. Happy, happy, happy. Wish this living. Okay, so what do you do to achieve your dreams? And are there days when you want to go out to French, but you have to stay home to work? Um, okay, so what you do to achieve your dreams is you, you work. Sometimes there are sacrifices that you have to do. You have to choose. Life is about choices and priorities. And you sometimes have to say, you know what? I'm not going to be able to go out with my friends today, but if I work and I get this job and I prepare my scene for my movie, I'm going to have the success and everybody's going to clap for me. So knowing that you're going to have that amazing feeling of success makes you, uh, you know, motivated to stay in and work and prepare instead of going out and having fun just that day. The biggest concert you sang at, and how many people were there, and which instrument are you the best at? You can answer one by one. Concert I've sung at, and how many people were there, which instrument I best at? Thank you for answering. Okay, so, my the biggest concert I've ever done was Nina must thirty five thousand people, forty thousand people. Uh yeah, with my dad. I sang with him. Um and it was amazing. We had a really, really good time. Uh the thing about when you're in an arena like of thirty thousand people and you have your in ear monitors like when the in-ear monitors to hear yourself, you can't hear the audience clapping. You have to like take it off and then you'll hear everybody clapping, but you want to keep this in. And the spotlight is on you. Like you can't see, sometimes you can't see the audience unless they light it up. So sometimes it's just you and you're looking into this giant light and you can hear the roar of thousands of people and then you'll be like turn on the lights uh, the house lights and they'll turn on the house lights and you just see all the people they're just like ah. so it's amazing it's really cool okay so our audience wants to know how many languages do you speak <laughs> Приятно ми е да се запознаем. Аз съм Адан. Здравей, на здравей. No. <laughs> I speak io parlo italiano e mi piace di conoscerti. Mi eh, io sono cantante. Grazie mille per il vostro aiuto e supporto. That's Italian, Portuguese. Ciao.
Obrigado, Brasil. Obrigado por assistir, pelo meu apoio. Eu te amo, eu te adoro. Obrigado pela é, a próxima música chamada Nunca Me Largues. Tudo bem, tudo ótimo, legal. Das português. French is like, je suis très heureux de tracer la belle ville de Sofia. Merci beaucoup pour tout. Attends, tu chantes avec moi. French. Um, what else? <laughs> Hola, mucho gusto. Me llamo Alan. This is Spanish. It's like, un placer en conocerte. Me encanta cantar y actuar. Y mi papá es mexicano y, ma y mi mamá es puertorriqueña. Uh, And, you know, basically those are the ones that I dominate most. <laughs> okay, so what about your favorite film? Is A Star is Born from Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Как успяваш да се вселиш в конкретен герой? Как всъщност ги изграждаш? Incarnate into a specific character, how do you create them? Yes. The way you create the character is you work from the outside in. Look at the way they dress, you dress up like them for like a month or two months before the role. You wear their shoes. You wear their outfit, you wear their clothes, and then you you interview somebody that is a, like your character, or you if it's autobiographical, you interview that person. But what you do is that you learn how to walk like them, you walk like them, you talk like them, you move your face like them. You know, if you're gonna work like from you're like from New York, you're gonna start talking like you're from from the big city. You know, it's like a trumpet. Everybody get out of my way. That's the way I'm gonna talk. I'm talking like this because I'm from the big city. You can change your accent as if you're from Britain. It's different because it's crisp and you're from uh, you know the BBC English. It's Queen's English. Uh, you can talk like you're from France, and the way you talk is you make your mouth, you move in a different way, and you could have the cigarette, uh, the way you speak. Uh. So, accents, it's the way you pronounce the mouth and the way you move the face. Some people are like, some people like eyes like close like this a lot, or some people like use their eyebrows a lot. Or some people are just like talking in a smile. So like you could just, you know, you observe how is the way they talk? How do they move their bodies? I mean, I'm very expressive with my hands. Like I use my body language. Like this is how I use my hands. So you also look if they're all, if they're all like this all the time, this is closed or if they're like this. So those, and so those are the ways it's like you observe everything from the outside and remember So you work from the outside in. So if you smile, in it, the body, the brain doesn't know that you're doing a fake smile because this is fake. This is a fake smile. But when you wrinkle this, that's a real smile. So hold it there. Hold it there and you'll be happy. Power poses. You know, if you want to feel powerful, do that. You see winners. When you see winners from like competitions and racing, they'll be like this. And so just like stand like that, or stand or st or be like this. This is another power pose. This lifts up the testosterone. It's kind of like Wonder Woman. So you know, you stand like that for an hour. And you, you feel good. You breathe. You know? It's breath. It's also in the breath. The character is not only what you say, but it's the pauses that you take. Because in the pauses, you let the audience interpret what you're saying. There has to be a sort of mystery to your character. 
on the on the the character there's something you're hiding okay so tell us which are the best exercises for like vocal warm-ups diaphragms for you sure uh okay so i'm gonna take my headphones off one second so you do that <laughs> So you do that, and you go, and then you want to relax this, because if the if the back is tense, the neck is tense. So if you tense that up and relax it, you're gonna relax. So you relax that, and then. There's this really awesome massaging. You can massage your vocal cords by doing this. Uh, and that's what I call the crocodile. So you do that before and after you sing. Uh, people are going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> so you can do it with your mouth closed. Like, And of course, the diaphragm, you gotta engage the diaphragm. So, what you'll do is. And when you're singing, you intake it and you go. So, that's what you're doing. That's a good, good ammo. I play uh, guitar, bass, drums, and piano. So that's four instruments. Um, I've been, I started off with drums. Um, then I played guitar. Then I played uh, piano. And then I went back to learning how to play solos on and the scales to be a lead guitarist. And once I learned how to solo on the guitar, then on the bass, I was able to do the different because um, it's only four string bass that I play, so you're able to do the different scales and play around on the song with that, um, with the bass. And, and piano is a very fairly easy instrument to play because you don't have to worry about pressing hard or the calluses, you just play and learn the scales. Надявам се, че вече оправихме техническите си проблеми и ще може да ви запознаем с бащат на Адан, Фернандо. Фернандо, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Vasilena. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. That's fantastic. So, please tell us something about you. Okay, well, first of all, hello. Hi from the beautiful island Puerto Rico in the Caribbean. Uh, about me, I can tell you that I was born in Mexico City. Um, the 10th of November of 1952, I'm 68 years of age. And uh, I did my first film at 18. Uh, the name of the film is Maria. It was based uh, on a novel written by a Jewish Colombian author and um, it was a classic when it was written and uh, in every single version was very very successful uh, but very especially this uh, production that was done uh, by Mexico and that was my first film and uh, lots of beautiful incredible interesting things happen uh, when I did that film but to give you just an idea that was the first one 
of uh, 43 feature films that I've been able to do. Um, when I finished my first film, I uh, also felt that I needed to be closer to uh, my people, to the audience. And I started singing and the first album, the first song that I recorded uh, became a, a, a golden album. Um, so then after that, I've been able to record through the years 176 songs. Uh, that's in the area of singing, then the area of acting. I told you already about the films. Uh, Production-wise, I've also been part of, of the producing and applying everything. So um, it's been uh, this next year will be 50 years in the in the industry, uh, and it's been very interesting to be able to go through different areas: singing, acting, producing. So I'm happy to be here today. I want to say hello to all the participants in the Arlequin Film Festival. And uh, thank you for the invitation. I hope the next year Adam and I will be able to be with you personally and enjoy once again this phenomenal country, which is Bulgaria. By the way, I'm wearing this T-shirt because I, I bought it in Bulgaria. I'm Sofia. Uh, we were there last uh, in, invited to do this lobby show and uh, also a memorable visit to the Nubuyama studios. So I'm very happy to be here today with you, and I'm very happy also to receive any kind of questions from the participants. Thank you to the Ministry of Culture for the invitation. Thank you for the film festival, the Arlequin Film Festival. And as I said before, I hope that the, that next year we'll be able to be there in person to have this personal contact, but thank you also to have this technology that allows us uh, to to be so far and yet say. So, uh, so we're getting the questions through the phone. Uh, to me, inspiration is uh, life uh, itself. Uh, everything that I can see or read or feel, uh, those elements inspire me uh, to do music to compose, to sing. Uh, when you're singing, I mean, you're remembering uh, emotions felt before, and you can apply it to, to the singing. Uh, but to me, inspiration is, uh, is all over. Uh, nature is its sharing. So, the fact to be alive and to be able to create and and to leave a legacy which is the beauty of being part of this incredible business as an actor or as a singer or as a producer or as a writer um living that sea i think is so important and to answer your question inspiration is is life life itself uh, uh working with adan with uh, my youngest son has been really an inspiration, has been really wonderful to be able to share a stage, either singing, dancing with a band, with an orchestra, with a, with a ballet, or, or, or sharing the stage. Me as a director, uh, directing him uh, uh, in, a, in a feature film, uh, all those moments, sharing those elements that leave a legacy uh, for future generations, we must understand that that when this business is done the proper way, it does not vanish through time and space. When you when you create uh, important, memorable, meaningful concepts, they're there uh, probably for eternity. You know, for probably forever, and. Uh, that's just to know that it's a great inspiration that if you do things right if you can inspire people There's by what you say or what you do um it's that's a great inspiration working with my son is phenomenal what are okay thank you tell us a bit more about uh, your new project okay um uh, i uh, we just finished a very uh, important project that you can access. We, uh, Adan and I, 
uh, were part of this incredible, incredible project by the name of the Tattoo Torah. Uh, this uh, project was sponsored by the foundation created by Steven Spielberg uh, through the California University. This film is so meaningful because it, it tries to explain the Holocaust to young people like you in the festival because I understand they're, they're, they're young people and, and children interested in the industry, in, in show business, in film. Uh, this project, uh, the Tattoo Torah, has been receiving a lot of recognition around the world because, because it touches that important fiber within your emotion, your mind and your heart together, trying to understand uh, the Holocaust, a very difficult, difficult topic. That's a, a project that I've been very proud of. It's very recent that it was released and and still, you know, it has received a lot of attention. And the other project that I'm involved right now, uh, uh, film-wise, is I'm finishing this script. It's called Dream Dance. And Dream Dance is based on my personal experience through uh, a reality television show very similar to Dancing Stars, but the difference here is that you dance for a dream. And uh, it was very interesting because uh, uh, I had to choose in the first show uh, one of the two dancers that the production company presented to me, and I decided to go with a 16-year-old virtuoso dancer and experiences with this difference of age, I felt that by choosing her, I could also with her show Mexico and the world and Latin America uh, that, that two generations, even though they're distant, they can still create magic together. And uh, it was really a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And what a privilege to be able to leave that story in a script, in a, in a film script. And I'm just about to finish it, and I've received already a lot of attention because I believe that the world right now required this kind of, back, back to the inspiration, this kind of inspirational stories that really touch people. Uh, we, we are part of an industry that can truly change lives. In the music side, I just delivered a new project uh, that you can find through this uh, international platform, music platform. It's called Distro, like distribution, Distro Kid. And uh, the name of the project is Country Bolero. So um, it was a fusion, musical fusion of uh, top country music songs and then arranged in a more contemporary way with the sound of a mariachi. I hope you know what a mariachi is. And if you, you can always uh, Google it. Uh, it is the, the very traditional Mexican music. It's a band that uh, has strings, you know, three violins. It has two guitars. One is called Tololoche, which is a big, big bass guitar. And then we have uh, the trumpets. And it's a very peculiar sound. It'll be interesting uh, for you guys if you if you would like to to listen a little bit, check check mariachi music, and you'll understand how beautiful it is. It's the international uh, Mexican sound. So those are my projects uh, right now, and I'm really wishing to to start this new year with all this all these projects, and also to come to Bulgaria and say hello to you guys personally. Talk, say uh, what are your favorite things to do? Favorite things to do? 
Family to me comes first. You know, I really enjoy uh, spending time with my family. Family trips, uh, vacations together, experiences being shared together. I uh, I really like spending time with family and, and Nacho. I, I believe that you met already Nacho, our dog, who is also part of the family. A sweet, wonderful entity, individual, a, a wonderful, wonderful guy, funny He's a great guy. So I like spending time with my family, uh, with uh, Nacho, our doggy. I like traveling. I really like uh, the stage. I like singing. I like being on stage and having this uh, immediate communication with people. I feel that you can really touch a lot of fibers uh, uh, with, with music. Music has this, uh, that capacity, that element. Uh, I really like nature. I like the ocean. I like the forest. Uh, I like people. I really enjoy sharing with people. I love laughing. Laughing is one of my favorite things. And Adana and I, we laugh a lot. I think that's one of the trademarks of uh, our friendship and relationship and, and father and son uh, relationship, you know. So, oh, there you are. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I like working. I, I like I like filming. I like directing. I love directing. To be able to um, to apply, you know, I, I mentioned that I'm uh, I'll, I'll be 50 years in the industry. So to be able to apply all that when you uh, react, uh, it, it's really really interesting. It it makes you grow because uh, this, the experiences that you've lived before apply it uh, to to actors and actresses and and to um, lighting engineers and to sound engineers and and to editors to apply all that it makes you relive uh, what you have learned before and it's enhancing to your life so i mean those are i like music you know i i like uh, i like life happy and to live. What advice would you give to young people to have a successful career as actors, singers, and producers? Well, uh, first of all, uh, to make sure that this is your passion. Uh, to me, passion is described as something that, that you, for hours and hours and hours, and when you stop doing it, you already miss doing what you love the most. So uh, I think that's very, very important to have the passion for what you do. Uh, two, not less important, uh, extremely, extremely important for you to prepare yourself. Uh, it's a very, very competitive arena. And uh, the, the more prepared you are, the better chances you have to succeed. Um, uh, to be very, very well prepared. Uh, the other thing that I would say is uh, so sure that this is what you love, no, that nothing, nothing can really turn you off. You know, that no, none of any um, derogatory comments or people that might not understand where you're coming from. It's a very interesting business. In this you need to understand uh, not to take it personal. Because in certain occasions, if you're if you're taller or or shorter, if you're darker or lighter, if you it all has to do with uh, with the, the perspective of producer and director. So I mean, don't take if things uh, do not go the way you want them to go. Don't take it personal. Just continue to go and and mostly and most important, have fun, enjoy what you do enjoy every second of what you're doing it's got to be fun it's got to be uh, an enhancing experience and i don't mean fun that you're going to be laughing all the time but i mean it's got to be enjoyable you need to enjoy and if this is your passion you will be enjoying what you do thank you fernando so we have a question what is your favorite role you have played can you tell us uh, well, you know, after all all these uh, years in the industry, 
um, yes, you know, I, I can tell you about uh, my first film, which was a Maria. I, excuse me, Adam, do you have my telephone? Because I would like to show something. <laughs> Adam, yes, do you have my phone? Yes. Okay, I want to I wanna show you something because uh, I remember Maria, which was my first film, which was, which was really uh, one of my favorite characters that opened a lot of doors. Uh, I remember playing a character that had nothing physically to do but emotionally was very much connected. I don't know if you've heard about the Virgin of Guadalupe. The Virgin of Guadalupe is um, uh, 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 a character uh, to whom uh, represents, you know, the first occasion that uh, we had an apparition in Latinica, and this was the Virgin of Guadalupe. And the Virgin of Guadalupe appears to the most humble of the Indians, of the Mexican, uh, you know, Indians, and um, uh, being, being a, a bit European and a bit Latin American, but I mean, not exact having the Indian blood, it was kind of difficult for me uh, to approach the producer and say, I want to play this part, but, but then I, I went to the studio and early in the morning, I just was helped by all the people in the studio. And I, I, I put myself into the character and I outside the office of the producer who happened to be my friend. And, and you know, funnily enough, he, he walked through me and just looked at me with the tail of his eye. And then the secretary came out and uh, check it out. It's, it's uh, El Indio Juan Diego, Juan Diego the Indian. That's another character that I really, really love. And, and most recently, uh, I was uh, in, uh, in Spain uh, with a film, but I mean, in Hollywood also, I mean, Master of the Game, you can Google that one. I mean, based on a novel written by Sidney Sheldon, an incredible character. I, I, I play on that one, a Greek, the Golden Greek. His name was George Mellis. That was a wonderful, wonderful character that I remember a lot. Um, I want to show you something that you might find interesting, which is this or this friend of mine uh, called me. He says, you know, I, uh, we're going to do another film together. Uh, we're going to do it in, in Spain. You're really going to have a fun time with this, with this character. And, um, and I said, well, I mean, what character? So, uh, I mean, that was a stretch also, you know, he said, you're going to play one of the, of the three kings uh, in, this, uh, in this epic story. Oh, and this and this wonderful. Uh, not that I want to change the subject, but I mean, look at Nubuyana. Oh my God, I really, really had a phenomenal, phenomenal time. Visiting a man. History. Look, look what was going on here. Okay, this is really, really fast. Uh, two hours of makeup, uh, you know, to transform me. Um, this producer friend of mine wanted for me to to be one of the of the three kings, um, and this is the result. After all this two hours, uh, I I, <laughs> I think you're gonna like this one. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this for you. This is me and the camel. This is the first time. I, I love this character because I've never ridden a camel. But, but check this out. Check this out. What I'm telling the camel is I know <laughs> I'm telling the camel I know you've never done a film. And not to worry, you know, uh, second take is always better than the first one. And he simply looked at me. So um, anyway, that's a little bit. Oh, let me remind you about this this show. Do you recall this in Bulgaria? <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was one of the of the last shows that he did. But, <laughs> what a memory! We had a great time. 
I put Slavi to drink tequila. <laughs> and he put me to drink rakia. <laughs> it was you're talking about memorable moments. That to me was a memorable moment. I mean to be in Bulgaria, to be in the Slavi show, to go to the Nubuyana studios that were so kind to all of us and to see those incredible structures, thinking about the magnificent feature films that were created there. So, I mean, remember that, you know, showbiz, singing, acting, producing, writing, it is not only that. The main thing is the social connection, the heart-to-heart -heart connection that you create by using the vehicle of the music or the vehicle of the film or the character. Um, the most important thing for all these years is, is the wonderful people that you become friends with and some of them uh, with with time uh, they become chosen family to you and i think that is the greatest or one of the greatest uh, advantages of being part of a, a a profession that that works with emotions that works with souls that works with with touching that incredible area within yourself so i mean those are few of my memories. I do have several more, but I know that we're limited a little bit in time. Uh, so when I come to Bulgaria, I will tell you a little more about all the other experiences. It's been a very fun, fun ride through all this year. Uh, and as I said before, the most important thing is what's left behind, which is wonderful friends, wonderful people, uh, knowing through your work, different cultures, different entities, different countries, different food, different different experiences, different visuals. So uh, I find that this career, it's uh, extremely enriching. Uh, I, I'm definitely, you know, whenever I depart, I know that, that I, I'm going to leave being a better human being and that I have expanded my emotion and my mind. Nice with your favorite activity, Sima. I uh, I feel very fortunate that first of all I was uh, able to to understand that I was I was born to be an actor and a and a producer. I was very very young when I knew that I wanted to to be part of the industry. Uh, it, it has touched my soul. I have grown uh, enormously. And uh, it's really, really hard. It's like your babies. I mean, uh, singing is phenomenal because uh, if you guys are there, uh, want to be singers, uh, uh, the fact that I'm also an actor allows me not only to be a singer, but to be able to interpret, you know, the the lyric of the song. So uh, there are wonderful voices in the world, but that voice that transmits to you an emotion, that is a different story. So, I mean, to me, singing, singing is like putting together the actor and the singer. But now, now I, I wouldn't be able to do the singing without the acting. The acting really, really helped me to understand a care, how to how to walk a character, how a character thinks. Uh, when I create a character, uh, uh, none of my characters look the same, or speak the same, or walk the same. I give every one of my characters like a a, a personality. Um, there's ways of, of speaking, of talking. It all depends on the character. It's important when not to play yourself. Uh, even though the industry works a lot in realm, that if you look the part, you can play the part. Uh, to me, it's important to expand myself into characters 
that that don't look like me nor think like me um uh that that has taken me to 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 play different characters you know from the romantic uh you know the most romantic individual in in a in a period film to a psychopath uh someone that would work in the uh in the uh, stock market in new york in the daytime and he's uh you know, he has a double life at night and becomes an assassin. And so, I mean, what I'm trying to tell you is that, that you do not only learn from the positive characters, uh, you also learn a lot when you play a negative character. Uh, especially, you learn what you don't want to be or you don't want to do. Uh, when you do the positive characters, you know that you're doing the right thing and and the, you know, if you're a good person, well, the expansion mentally is, is really less than when you play something that has really nothing, nothing to do with you. And you and you can really go to the desk. This is something that I wanted to mention to you that also answer uh, the question uh, before. Um, the, the desk, the desk work, the work that you do on the table, all the work that you do on the pre-production side, learning your character on the table, memorizing it, but learning from the table, from the work, from from the desk, looking at it, thinking of it. And then you translate all this that you learn, you translate it when you are on the doing it. So um, uh, this brings me to the theater also, you know, which is a, a, another of my passions, a musical theater. Uh, I, 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 I love that. And the contact, you know, you heard this before, the contact, direct contact with the audience. That's also very, very interesting, very gratifying. And the challenge, the challenge that you, you do the same dialogue every show, but the audience teaches how to be fresh and how to do the same play uh, in a different personality every day. It is the same play, nothing really changes, but it is this connection with the audience that allows you to expand doing the character. So, I mean, stage is also phenomenal. Okay, so uh, they want to know what is the most important professional meeting and uh, what did you learn from it? Uh, explain that to me. The most professional, uh, the most important professional meeting uh you mean when you when when you meet producers or when you want to co-produce with somebody you mean that that kind of professional meeting okay can you be more specific on the question please uh i'm sorry um that's not a question for me uh it's a question from some some of our um public so uh maybe you can answer both is that fine um, well, uh, professional meetings, um, it really all depends on the character, but for example, if you are asked to, to, to meet a producer, not producing yourself and you want to meet a producer, uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, ne never wear, never wear a yellow, a yellow t-shirt. Okay, I'm wearing this one because I bought it in Bulgaria and I love Bulgaria, and it's a good uh, momentum. But if you go for an audition, always try to be as neutral as possible. Black, for example, you know, if, if you dress in black, it's very serious. They are able to focus in you, in you, in your face, uh, in. Uh, it's it's not distractive. So you're gonna do an audition. Make sure that you that you know your lines very very well, uh, that you can repeat and backwards and forward and know your lines. Um, there was a saying uh, of my inspector. Uh, let me see if I can translate this. He says, uh, um, uh, "To a well known script, there's not a bad actor." He was a real, he was a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, it's a it's a drastic comment, uh, but it's a saying. You know, to to a well 
memorize the script does not exist a bad actor that was his point of view the point of me is that it's important for you to know your lines very well to appear very friendly very uh, uh ductile very uh, that, that that you can be directed you need to show that you can you can stop being yourself and become the character that you can be guided by by the by a director so so be very friendly be nice don't overdo it know your lines very well dress in a very subtle subtle way not to distract any of your gestures for people to focus if you're going to be on camera even better you see there are certain colors that swallow light uh, and they, they take away your light so uh, if you go on a, on a dark color uh, I think you'll do you'll do better. So I mean uh, that is the way I do my meetings when I'm I'm going and running for a part, and uh, and I do a feed when an actor or an actor is over with their lines very well known. Uh, also, I always when I'm producing and I'm choosing uh, a cast, I like to find people that can offer uh, something to the character uh, for them to understand what they're doing and for me to understand that they've done their homework that the character that they can offer uh, a, a new a new light to the character remember that a character initially is nothing but a but a, a letter in black on a white paper that was the inspiration of the writer but but you need to give life you need to give life to the to the paper and to the black and white so if i can see that if I can feel that, I feel much more uh, the feeling of trusting the individual that I'm hiring for a certain part. Okay, so uh, our last question is, uh, at what age do you start making music? Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. I've, uh, I've always liked to, to sing. Singing was always my passion, even though I started my first professional work as an actor. Uh, but you know, when I was a kid uh, in Mexico, I don't know how you grade students in Bulgaria, but in Mexico, from one to 10. So if you get a 10, is the top, top, top. If you get five, mm, six is like, ugh, barely you pass. But anyway, Uh, uh, oh, uh, I used to say, well, what do you like uh, as, a, as, a, as an award, as a reward, as a present? And I always uh, like to ask for them to take me over to the, the Mari. There's a place in Mexico called Xochimilco, uh, which uh, there are little boats that you can go around and you have the mariachi band on another boat next to you. So I would go and sing. Um, so, so, so singing from the very beginning was, uh, was my passion. And then I grew into, into acting. So um, uh, I would say that the singing, singing and mariachi, uh, mariachi music. And then obviously I expanded into other kinds of, of music, more contemporary, uh, but uh, uh, still, I believe that music has always been my path, and I have been able to apply everything I learned as a musician, as a singer, as a composer. Uh, in the long run, I feel privileged to be able to unite all the experiences as producer, actor, writer, singer, uh, to put them all together. And I, I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I'm a proud artist. Okay. Thank you very much for your participation. And uh, the last question Thank you. I want to ask you is uh, what is the message you and your son want to send to our viewers? Well, uh, I'm sure that Adan did uh, already his, his message. Mine, uh, uh, I, I want to I wanna thank, as I uh, started the conversation, I want to uh, thank the Ministry of Culture in Bulgaria for supporting this incredible motion, which is uh, showing 
youngsters the beauty and uh, 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 the complexity of, of the industry to show them how beautiful and complex and the beauty of that. So I want to thank you for that uh, to Arlequin Film Festival. Well, thank you so much for having Adan and myself. And I want to say goodbye, uh, wishing you a very, very beautiful, wonderful, loving, family oriented, uh, uh, you know, Christmas season. And especially uh, wishing you all Bulgaria and families uh, the best new year, a year that will allow us to accomplish your dreams. Uh, we're wishing you a lot of health, a lot of happiness. And as we said before, we hope to see you this next year personally in Bulgaria. Thank you so much for having us. The best to you. Happy holiday season. Viva Bulgaria! Thank you very much, Fernando. И така, това беше всичко от нас за тази вечер. Това бяха Фернандо и Адам Айенде. Така, ще се видим утре в 19 часа с конкурсната програма.